That's Two Cents. And now we are back with Andrea. And I want to share something with you real quick, and she's going to take it from there. Listen, you guys, we are so casual about our walk with God. One thing that chaps my hide, if I could use that old-fashioned expression, is hearing born-again Christians as well as sinners say, Oh, God, he understands when we make mistakes. Dad nabbit, y'all ain't making a mistake. If I sin, if you sin, it's sin. Call a spade a spade. Tell it like it is. Don't be sitting up there shucking and jiving with it because God calls sin, sin. He doesn't call sin a mistake. Now, I'm going to let... I'm going to let Andrea go take it from there. That is a pet peeve with me. Here you go. Go on, yeah. Andrea. Oh. So I don't know if any of you guys have heard of Bodie Bauckham or Paul Washer, but I watched a, it was one of them. They were talking about how what really grinds their gears is when people say, he's my friend, he understands, and, yeah. you know, oh, uh -huh. Jesus got my back, you know, just, just casual things like that. It, it seems funny, but it really makes people take God not serious. God, right. the creator of the universe, it, it makes us take him not serious. And so take when him we lightly. fall into grievous sins, we're like, well, he understands. It's hard for me. I was born this way. Well, I don't think uh, an alcoholic driving down the street crashes into someone and says, well, you know, God understands. You guys should understand. It's hard for me to not drink and drive. No, mm -hmm. you kill somebody, you go to jail. Thank right? you. God will handle it the same way. You you know what my word says, and you chose to twist the scriptures to fit your agenda right. and or just straight up deny and say, well, that just doesn't apply. Well, who said? By whose standards are you living, yours or his? So mm. we need to stop being so casual about God and what we're supposed to be doing. We need to be hard on ourselves and gentle on other people. That's right. That's right. So, when you fall into a sin, don't just say, oh, this or oh, that. Call it what it is. Right. You are sinning right now. You are right. grieving the Holy Spirit. Exactly. You are, you are in danger right now. And you, you, you exactly. better not try and wade in those waters for years. Because you're there, it says in the Bible, your conscience can get seared to yes. sin. Yes. You do not listen to the Holy That's Spirit. Right. After a while, it's just like, fine, I'll stop telling you then. Uh-huh. There it is. Now, see, a lot of us, we go through life doing that, too. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many born-again Christians. It really cracks me up. You have a conversation with them, and they'll sit up there and call somebody a B-I-T in a minute. They'll, I mean, they've got all these choice names for people right there in the church. And we'll talk about how they get on their MF and nerves. And then turn right around and say, glory to God, praise you, Lord, hallelujah. Or they'll even be, make it worse, and they'll, they'll stub their toe, and they'll say, oh, Jesus Christ. Well, what do you think you're doing? You're cussing. You're taking the Lord's name in vain. Born-again Christians. And what really gets me you is... want somebody saying something horrible about your God, then watch what comes out of your own mouth. Thank you. About your God. Thank you. Because you can't sit there and get offended with someone saying, you know, well, he doesn't exist. God's not real. When you're sitting there and just casually cursing out his name. Yes. Now, we all have to work on things, but are you working on something or are you... Or have you, are you or have you moved in? Yes. Yeah. There's a difference about struggling against your flesh and your temptations versus saying, this is too hard for me, so I'm just going to say, God probably understands, and I'm right. going to keep doing it. Right. Now, here's an example. I had a friend years ago I used to go to school with. She ran into a little tough time. So she moved in to the Salvation Army. They had, you know, rooms you could rent for $200 a month. She moved into the Salvation Army. And she kept telling us she's using her mother's address because she doesn't want to collect her mail there. That is not her home. That is a temporary, mo she's stopping through. She's going to stop there for a minute, like a hotel room, and she's going to finally get her own place. 
That is not her home. That is a stop through. So what I'm saying to you is when sin becomes your home, you're in deep doo-doo. Yeah, you are you you're putting your soul in jeopardy. Right. At that point. You are you are dancing on a fine line and there's no line. You're either on the narrow path or you're on the broad path. And Thank you. A lot more Christians need to consider that Jesus himself said that there will be many, many of people that are going to say, Lord, Lord, did we not do this in your name or that in your name? And he's going to say, away from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. It's not about you saying, oh, I accepted God. Did he accept you? Does right. he know you? Look Does at that. Look at that. You? That's right. He only knows fully. Mm. He calls us to be holy. So really deeply consider that. Thank there are you. Going to be so many people who are going to be like, but, but I pray, I, I went to church. Like, yeah, but he didn't know you. He knows holy. Right. Are you living holy? Oh. We, we all need to really test ourselves all the time. Constantly. Or in the vine. Right. Right. We or have to. Withering. That's why the Bible says examine yourself. Examine yourself. See, there's yeah, a whole you lot of you. Almost do it daily. Yes. Examine what you're watching on TV. Examine who you're hanging out with. Examine Thank how you. much time you spend on Facebook versus your Bible. Do it daily. Thank you. Because the devil isn't taking a break. He's working at this 24-7, 365 days a week. How often are you working with the weapons that we have? Which right. is prayer and the Bible. We only got two. All right? So how often are you working at this? Only once a week when you go to church? Mm. We need to be in our word daily. The devil's trying to get at us daily. Thank you. You know, one of the things, the most ridiculous things I have ever seen online, Andrea, was a couple of guys witnessing, oh, Lord, oh, yeah. I could not believe my ears. Every other word was MF, was GD, was SHI. I mean, I was like, what? And they call themselves witnessing for Christ. I, I mean, it was so diametrically opposed. It was almost like I could almost see Satan sitting on the sidelines, just <laughs> cracking up. <laughs> you know. You really, I, I really believe sometimes when people are so self-deceived, he's like, I didn't even have to try and get at her. She got it herself. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, it, it's it's disturbingly sad how easily we we can fall like that, but we always have to remember, you could be right there. So Thank check you. yourself against the word of God. You have to. You have to check your motives. You have to check your intentions. You have to... Because he says he's a discerner of, of the bone. He knows what's going on. In the, listen, God told me years ago when I was walking straight, living holy, going to church every time the doors were open, serving him with a mighty burning fire. Girlfriend, God told me I was jealous of another woman's voice. I was shocked. Me? I'm living holy. How am I jealous, Lord? And the Lord started replaying my thoughts. Every time she got up to sing. And when I listened to my thoughts, I was like, oh, I am jealous. I'm so sorry. We have got to have an ear to hear. Or else we yeah, will be so full of ourselves, so, we'll miss it. If you sit there and think, well, I'm saved by grace. I'm good. I'd never do that. I'd never do that. The devil's right there like, oh, I'm going to get you. Right. You have to always remember it could be you. That's right. And you have to be willing to humble yourself because, listen, if God wasn't bothered by it, he wouldn't have bothered you about it. Exactly. Mm. Anything, anything. I mean, there, I see, you know, this movie came out, Girl's Trip, and all these people in my church were either vehemently opposed to it or they're like, well, it's funny. It's nasty. It is nasty. It is vulgar. It is nasty. And they get down and pray and they say, Bless us on this trip because we're about to get messed up. Really? Oh. Really? Really? Wow. Christians are like that. Christians are like that. What You you try to ask God to bless you in your sin right now? Right. Right. We got to check ourselves. We that is check crazy. Ourselves we be doing some, some stuff. That's
humans contradict themselves. God never does. Mm-hmm. Ooh, girl. So take his love way more serious. Thank than you. We could. And just, like I said, be hard on yourself and be kind to others. That's but right. Don't, 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 don't begin to make one excuse for yourself. Right. Don't even make don't one. Don't allow it. That's right. Remember, God ain't your homie. Into the door mm-hmm. When you do that, right, more things will roll in, and you didn't even know it, and all of a sudden you're making excuses for things everything. Just, you you thought you died to that 50 years ago, but it, that's how it happens. It's one that's thing. Right. That's right. One only it's one thing to compromise yourself on, and you're gonna find yourself in heaps of trouble. And you're going to end up with some strongholds that, baby, you tinkered with them, but they ain't letting go of you. Just like an abused spouse. You you, you want to leave? Oh, you moved in with the wrong one. You hooked up with the wrong buddy because he's busting you upside your head. Now you're ready to go. And he's like, oh, no. The only way you go out of here, I'll kill you. And that's just the way Satan is. He will kill you as you try to get out. You better get in Christ. And you better get all the way in. Don't have Satan's pants on while you got God's shirt on. It don't go like that. You got to get dressed one way or the other. And like we said in the other conversation, it's you wear Jesus as your skin, not as a uniform. Yeah, you don't take that off at any time. That's right. There's no double life. And we have to realize also that God is holy, but we have an enemy who wants to kill us. Yes. He would rather kill you than have you walk another day on this earth and get any closer to God. Right. He hates you. Yes. He's, Satan hates us. Yes, he does. He wants to kill us. He wants to steal everything from us. He wants to destroy it, and then he wants to kill us. Right. And and you cannot let him have an in at all because he will do just that and laugh the whole way through. Exactly. So remember who your foes are and remember who your friend is. But he's, he's not your friend. He's your holy God. Yes. Yes. And if, if you consider him your friend, which the Bible does say, he's your friend, not your homie. He's your savior, not your sidekick. He's your right. God, not your gopher. And he's not your accomplice. He does not understand why you're still sleeping with that man. All right. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much, girl. This is rich. I hope that somebody had an ear to hear because we need to have an ear to hear what's going to line us up with God. God bless you, everybody. And thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Oh, no problem. Mm. No problem. Okay, we'll holler at y'all another time. Later, Gators. <laughs>